You know, we talk about I am blessed. Man, when we look at that list again, it, it doesn't always sync up with the way we think about being blessed. It, 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 some of these things are really difficult. We don't think about going through those as being a blessing. It, it really kind of harkens to what I've been hearing going on. And uh, Pastor Rich and I were having this conversation about it. this week again is about where you, how you hear how often in the Christian community about the end times. Because of all the things that are happening in the pandemic and all the things across the world that we start to take notice of. See, it's interesting how something that finally comes to your doorstep will get your attention of what really has been happening around the world. And, and that's, it's really starting to shake the church up at about the end times, the time where this end of this life will come to an end. And, and we don't know those days. No one knows the day or the hour. And if anyone does, my friend, don't trust it. But I'll tell you this, we do know the signs of the times. It's clearly in Scripture. And I know this, we're closer than ever to those days when the Lord shall return back for his church. Man, there's that, that imagery of Christ returning for his church in the rapture. It's the church returning back to the Lord. This is actually in the Sistine Chapel on the far wall right above the massive ceiling that you think of. And as you look, as you're there in Rome, inside Vatican City, you can turn and look at the scope of all these naked people, and it throws you off. No, what it really does is talking about everyone from every walk of life as they belong to the body of Christ, as they are Christ followers, so they will be returned or raptured back to the Lord. And it's a powerful thing because it, it, it hearkens this idea of the end of the world. Then the end of the world is so popular. Everything uh, in popular media, there are tons of shows about the end of the world. I mean, I, it's, it's one of the, the best genres that's out there, right? It's like seeing everything be destroyed and the end of the world by a wave or a volcano or whatever, right? You know, Twister back in the day. You guys remember Twister? You know, like all these different things that are going on. And then every time that you have something crazy that happens, because it talks about in Scripture things like a blood moon. When you start seeing a blood moon happen, people are like freaking out. They're like, there's a blood moon on Thursday. Will Friday, will we be here? You know what I mean? Like, and here's the deal. Like, it's good to pay attention to these things, but don't bank your faith on whether or not the blood moon is in the sky. You walk your faith out with the Lord every single day. Here's the thing. It is more likely that you are to meet the Lord today than we collectively, because unless he comes for us collectively, we should be ready every single day. And we should be living like that, man. The word that's brought here today, I already knew my notes. I'm like, praise God. That's right. He says to live as though you are one of those who are righteous. And that's exactly what the Lord is calling us to. Man, I think about it. People think about the end of the world. They think about, you know, having to be worried and prepped up and running your gas mask because the people are coming for you. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like have your bunker dug and, and then have this, the, secret, the, the secret bunker that's not the public bunker you put on YouTube. I think that's weird, right? Whenever the preppers are like, hey, this is all the stuff I prepared. I'm like, I'm going to that guy's house and taking it from that guy. Thank you for preparing it for me, guy. You think about this, but here's the deal. It talks about in Scripture, we don't need to worry about this. We need to be one worrying about our everyday faith with the Lord. I tell you this, when you look at like the, the destruction, those scenes you see in movies, or even fallout from things like Chernobyl, these scary, scary scenes. How many people think this is super scary? Man, when you look at this, it's like a baby doll and a gas mask and eeriness. This screams eeriness. You know what I'm talking about? And it's one of those things that, man, like, this is how people think it's going to happen. And I'll tell you this, it's more likely, it's more likely that, that you need to go and meet Jesus by yourself. And so I would say this to you, the anticipation is for all of us that the Lord would come back right now in this moment before I finish this sermon. But if he doesn't, be ready for him to come for you. And live like that. Don't be afraid of this day. Man, live with the respect for the holy God that you will meet face to face. With no one beside you, not your spouse, not your mama, your daddy, your sister, your friend. Nobody. Just you. Face to face with the most high God. But here's the thing. We don't live in fear. That's what the word came today to us. Not to live in fear. We have what's called the great hope. The great hope, which is the return of the Lord. It's the return of Jesus back to the earth. And this time, Jesus is coming not the way that you think of before, where he came as the one who's the teacher and the peacemaker in the, in the manger. No, he's coming as a triumphant king of the world. 
And he's coming in a way to judge the just and the unjust. He's coming with strength and with power and with fire in his eyes. He's coming in a different way. And he's going to be the true judge. That's why whenever we forgive, we forgive because the true judge will judge them. And we, too, want to receive forgiveness. So because we're turning it over to him, it is our great hope because it is the future of what we have with him. It says we will rule and reign with Christ. Man, I am so encouraged. I am so blessed because I think about the future that is ours, the future that is mine and yours as we collectively are Christ followers, that we'll be in the presence of the Lord getting to rule and reign with him.